Hey folks, this is Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I want to take you through one of uh, my favorite trades that I look for uh, in trading options on a weekly basis in the SPX. doesn't work all the time, but it's one of those trades that has a higher probability than not to work. I think about 75% of the time, and I'll go through um, how the trade sets up and what I looked for and how the thing worked. So uh, a number of you that may have listened to these uh, video blogs or looked at some of my posts in the past know that I'm a big fan of looking at these expected moves. And in the SPX, I'm in the simulated trading app and I'm uh, in the analyze think back tab. I'm going to look back at the end of day trading data uh, for the 2nd of November, which is a Friday. And I see that the SPX closed at 2723. Now what I like to do on each Friday is look at the expected move for the week following Friday close. And uh, I usually put up a little guidepost on my charts that kind of give me an idea of where I am versus the expected move uh, on the SPX, which is, let's say, the big boy contract for the S&P 500. Uh, the trade works the same on the SPY, a little bit uh, uh, lower expense for the options that you would buy in this one. Uh, in the SPY than the SPX, but nonetheless the trade's the same, and I'm going to take you through the setup here. So on November 2nd, which is a Friday, at the close of the day, uh, we closed at 27.23, and I'm looking at the next Friday's close expected move to be 65 points. And what I do is I take plus or minus 65 points and put bars on my chart, horizontal bars, around 27.23. And if you uh, look at the bottom here, I can zoom in you'll see that gives me from the Friday close 65 up gives me 2788 and 65 down gives me 2658 from that close and then as the next day goes on Monday Tuesday Wednesday I kind of look at where we are relative to the one standard deviation expected move uh, as defined by thinkorswim now in this particular case uh, you know that we had the midterm elections on Tuesday had a huge trend day on Wednesday which took us out to outside the expected move but also is coincident with a potential resistance zone set up by the highs here that pivoted uh, and came back down and for me this is a pretty good high probability setup for looking at a potential fade uh, for the rest of the week back towards uh, the top end or are inside the expected move and now in this case you'll notice that we ended up inside the expected move and I believe if, as I've looked at the stats for this about 75 70 75 percent of the time and what I've looked at uh, we have actually ended up a close within the expected move on a one-week basis from a Friday to a Friday so it's a pretty good stat gives you a little bit of an edge at potentially looking at some of these uh, types of trades so what I did was I looked at setting up a butterfly near the close of this day uh, to come back towards the range and I set up a 25 point wide or I looked at several butterflies but what I ended up selecting was a 25 point wing balanced butterfly centered around 2775 and what I can show you is a back trade of how this looked at I'm gonna go from the second and this is the 9th 8th 7th uh, of November and I'm gonna go up to the 7th and I'm going to show you that trade. I'm going to select a put butterfly centered at 2775. So I'm going to buy a butterfly. Oh, there's a condor. Buy a butterfly. And I'm going to set the wings to be 25 points wide. So it's 25 up and 25 down. And you'll see at the end of the day on the 7th, uh, that trade was a purchase for two dollars and sixty roughly two dollars and sixty eight cents which for one contract on the SPX is about two hundred and sixty eight dollars um, what I ended up doing was buying uh, getting in the trade a little bit earlier than that my trade was actually at four dollars so I'm gonna set the price here for four dollars and that will lock the trade so at the end of day um, on the 7th, which is uh, Friday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday after the election, I was in this trade by the simulator. Um, $4 was $400. By the end of the day, of course, I was in a little bit of a loss-making position, which is shown by this uh, line that shows up on the back trade P&L graph. Um, 
I think I closed about $132 down. So I bought it for four, and I think I showed it was about $2.68 by the close of the day. So I was in a little bit of heat on that one. I ended up getting in it uh, right near the close. Uh, my intention was to let it ride for potential a double or a triple, uh, depending on how the price action was going to be on Thursday or Friday. The risk wasn't very big for me, $400. Uh, in an SPA, SPY trade, it would have been about $40 for one contract. It's about one-tenth uh, the price in the SPY. In any event, you can see what ended up happening here. I rode the trade into Friday and left my trade on uh, through much of the day. I did not ride it to the close, so I didn't get the max profit here. But you can see that the uh, trade closed at uh, 27 shows here. You'll see the high uh, the close here was uh, 2781.01. Uh, the risk in the trade or the break even point was your 27 uh, 2800 uh, strike less the $4 uh, that you paid for the trade. Uh, so I was going to be break even at 27. Uh, 96 and we ended up coming all the way down to 2781 uh, if you wrote it all the way to the close that's about a $19 um, close less the four dollars you paid so it's $15 profit on the one lots uh, 1500 bucks and you can see that shown up here by this yellow 1499 this P&L back trader will show you the close of Friday this thing closed at uh, 1499 so if you put on the trade, let it ride for 400 bucks, or if you got in the end of the day at uh, 20, uh, $298, you would have profited $1,499 per contract, uh, which is a, a great trade and a great setup. So look at that in the future. Um, go in and plot your expected moves for the week based on Friday, and uh, happy trading. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.